All right. Hey, everybody. So I'm Chris Kent. Uh, let's get started. Let's talk about some things. All right. So go to our classic Warrior Horses site. Uh, fun fact, I can't seem to change my theme right now. So maybe this isn't so bad. <laughs> we'll just keep that. Uh, but you know what? Warrior Horses, they use a lot of cool formatting. They do a lot of cool stuff. But even they have to have their own IT department uh, for issue tracking and, and upgrading hardware. So if we go over to the Warrior Horses IT site, all right, over here we can see they've got you know a nice IT site. And one of the things they're doing, because they didn't want to pay for any other software, they created an issues list right here in their team site. So if we go over to the issues list, uh, we can see here, it's pretty standard, pretty boring issues list, right? You got your issue here, when it was submitted, who it's assigned to, and a status. All right, and one of the things we've seen in the past, uh, which is nice, is being able to take something like the status. Let me bump that up a little bit in size here. And we go come to the status, and we go to column settings, and we go to format this column. All right, we can choose from the nice design mode here and apply some cool colors directly to those statuses. And that's cool. But what if we want to do icons, right? So this is pretty pretty straightforward. It's something we've done many times before. And I'm just going to copy and paste a format, and we'll talk about it here. All right, so if I preview that, all I'm doing here is I'm taking a look, right? So the value can be not started, in progress, or resolved. And all I'm doing is this kind of if statement here with the icons, right? Current field, not started, then use this icon. Otherwise, use this icon. And if it's none of those, use this icon. And then do the same thing for the color. That's pretty cool. That's straightforward. And you do something like that, and, you know, the, the PM or your scrub master or whoever is really excited. Wow, now I can tell what's going on. But what if they decide to get fancy, which often happens, right? Come in here, and now they've taken this status column. And instead, they've created this Uber status column because they wanted even more information, right? So we apply that, and we start to see now. Now they've taken that, and they've combined basically what's two different fields into one, right? They've taken that overall status of not started, and they've given a separate reason for it. So if we go to check those out, right, they've gone crazy. Look at all this, right? They got it. all these different versions of not started in progress and resolved. And now we're stuck, like, how do we get those cool icons back, right? What is the answer that I create even a larger switch statement? Like, that's insane. Right, like, everyone will go through that. And of course, they're going to add more because, hey, they're PMs, they're Scrum Masters, and that's what they do, All right? So I could go in and, again, modify this format to have lots and lots of if statements for all these different things. Or I could be a little smarter and use something like index of. Now, we've talked about index of before, and I'm just going to edit this format so we can kind of see it. So let's edit this format here. So if we come here and we format this column, we'll go to advanced mode. And now if we wanted to say, let's just for testing purposes here, say Elm type, and we'll just make it a div because that's exciting, right? And then we say our text content, in this case is at current field, just so we can kind of see what it is, right? It's not going to look almost any different than this. You notice also that it's getting cut off. And that's, you know, you can, obviously you can fix that here, but that's a personal setting and, you know, Letting people know that, ah, fun stuff, right? So we do something like that. That kind of fixes that. Hey, that's already better, right? But what if I wanted to show you those icons? I can use a cool formula. So one of the things we've talked about before was this idea of index of, right, where we can actually look at the value and we can inspect it. So we say at current field. We want to look inside there and we say, what's the index of, say, um, you know, not started? All right, and so if we do that, preview that guy, we'll start to see, oh, all the not started ones, it says it's zero, and one that doesn't have it are negative ones, right? So that's kind of our contains. So we could do a, a check to see if, you know, if it has the words not started and resolved and done, and we could write something up with that. Or we could say starts with means it have to be at zero. So now we're getting a little smarter. So let's see, if we take a look at that as with icons, I right, come here, we can paste this. Preview that. You can see if we look a little bit here, we've actually done this index of current field not started. If it equals zero, in other words, it starts with not started, then we do the same thing we were doing before. Hey, that's all right. And index of is really helpful for inspecting elements, right? So, and we did a whole uh, video about using kind of this contains and the starts with, and there's a few different samples available. And if you go to the YouTube channel, you'll be able to get to those. But what if we want to do something with the actual value, right? This just returns whether it's in there or not, right? So the value is always a number, right? What if I want to be able to, to do something fancier, right? And if we take a look, right, let's delete that and preview. These values, we have something in column 
co common, right? It's got this colon right here. So what if we could find out what's before the colon and what's after the colon and use those values directly? Well, we can, right? So there's there's an operator. Again, we'll kind of type our silly starter one here, text content. And there's an operator called substring, all lowercase like this. So substring, and we're going to say, look inside current field and tell me what's you know starting at zero and ending at four. So these are indexes of the string. So this is the number of characters, right? So zero is the first character, two is the second character, and so on. All right, so give me the first four characters of this thing. All right, just show me that. Now, if we preview that, hey, now we're getting somewhere, but you'll notice that these have different lengths, right? So not started is obviously different than resolved and in progress in terms of length. There is a length function um, available to you. Don't be don't be confused by it, though. It is not the same as like an LEN function, as you'd expect if you're a developer. But it would tell you the how many characters in a string. Instead, it'll just tell you one if it's a string or zero if it's empty. It's really for arrays. So in this case, though, right, I just want to see you know, up to that semicolon. Right? So I can actually combine that index of, right? and I can say, look inside current field, and tell me where is the colon. And I'm going to use that value as the index I want to go up to. I want to preview that. Wow, hey, I'm starting to extract that value. Right? And the same is true if I wanted to say, uh, go to the end. Right? So now we'll take that out. So I say this. I'm going to say, now the nice thing is you can just put in 100 here because it'll just go past the string. So if I preview that, uh, I did not close that. Let's close that. There we go. Got to get your parentheses right. Let's try that. There we go. Now we start to see I can get the second part of the value, right? I could say plus two to get rid of that. Uh, so, you know, the colon and the space. Preview that. Now I've got the second value. And I can do some really cool stuff with that. All right, so now we can take a sample available for you here in the SPDEV list formatting GitHub repo. Um, David will post the link here in a second, I'm sure. All right, but if we come in here into our column samples and we scroll down here, we've got this nice new one called generic substring status. And here, if we just grab this JSON as it exists, and again, I'm right here in GitHub, but I'm not doing any fancy GitHub stuff. I'm just grabbing all that. And I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to go back, and I'm just going to paste it in this box. And when I preview that, now we start to see something cool. All right, I'm doing the same detection we did before with the index of, as it starts with, to set my font color and my icon name. But now I'm actually breaking that value apart and showing it in a new way so that I can really see exactly what I want to do. So you start to see that using substring like that can be really, 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 really powerful. All right, so I'm going to save that. And now it doesn't matter if your Scrum Master or your PM adds 40 more columns to this thing. You can handle it and make it visually awesome, right? And the CEO can come by and say, oh, it looks like work's getting done, right? Whether it is or isn't. And that's great news. So if we come back, just to review, again, there's a whole separate video about these contains and starts with with the index of. The main thing to note is if it if the value is not found inside the string you're looking inside, you get a negative one. So all you have to do to check to see if a value is in there is determine if that value is not negative one. And if you want to do a starts with, you just see if it's zero. OK, but here's the extracting value. So the substring again has three parameters. It's a string to look inside the start index and the end index. Fun fact is the start index and the index end index don't have to uh, be in the right order. So if you wanted to say start index is 100 and end index is zero, you can. So which is nice. You're not going to get an out of range exception or something along those lines. But again, keep in mind these are zero based indexes. Uh, this no length function will come up at some point if we're trying to do certain types of string extraction. But if you just use a huge number, you'll go all the way to the end, and that works pretty well. But if you're trying to do something like getting value from the right side, that might be a little more difficult. Um, and again, if you use that index of inside there, you can split a value. I say split in quotes there because it's not true splitting, right? Uh, you wouldn't split everywhere where there's a colon. Uh, there's also no last index of, right? So there's a couple of things there that you know, it would be nice to have, but this is still super awesome and a huge leg up. Um, and it allows you to do a lot more without having to create these calculated columns, right? They're creating your kind of, you know, mashed up value while you're still looking at multiple values in different columns and you have to have them in your view and it gets really well, that's sad, right? So now you can use the substring to do all that. So check out the full documentation on it. There are examples of how to use the substring, how to use the index of, and 
lots of other operators that you can combine in here. And be sure to check out our list formatted samples repo. Uh, we got 80 plus samples there of how to do all sorts of different things, whether that's column formatting or view formatting. Uh, plus this specific sample I showed you, the generic substring status is available to you. So go check it out. That's all I got. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Chris, on that one. Just one note on the GitHub. If you run into any SP, uh, any column or view formatting issues, please open up those in the SP Dev Docs. We do have engineering actually watching on those, but if you have issues related on any of these samples, please use SP Dev List formatting. So open up the, the sample in here. So just make sure that we are on the right location. And and Chris is about to actually show the URL of SP Dev Docs, right? Yep. <laughs> A.ms slash SP Dev issues. Right. We'll take yep. straight to that issues list. There it is. Wow. Right. So if there's any issues, general issues related on anything on on column formatting, view formatting, please let us know. There are people in our engineering on day to day basis watching those. Uh, so please, please, please let us know. Excellent. Thank you, Chris, for that one. Mm -hmm.